the studio with us is Sarah Spiekermann, an information systems expert from the Vienna University of Economics and Business. Thanks for joining us. Well, she, you do research actually on the relationship between man and machine. And we've seen something quite amazing in the report that a principle from nature, evolution, is working so well in programming. Is that the trend we can actually see there for the future? I think that it is certainly one trend in programming. However, the question is where you apply it and whether you will use it in robotics, for example, or in what kind of system you really want to have it. And especially when machines like robots interact with people and not only between each other, then the question is to what extent you can really use evolutionary programming. This program actually means that the engineers do not really know what's happening inside the machine. To a certain extent, yeah. that is probably true. Or it would be very complex to understand afterwards how the machine acts or why it acted in a certain way. And for that reason, the liability of who is responsible finally for the behavior of the machine um, mm -hmm. is an open question. Mm -hmm. Of course, evolution does not end and we could also imagine the robots going through an evolution till they maybe someday take over is that possible well you're probably referring to a lot of science fiction like asimov's uh, there are serious uh, researchers too talking about that yes well um, of course we have to be very careful to what extent humans will maintain control over mm. machines any kind of machines not only robots and um, I think um, we have to inform people, we have to give them choices, mm. we have to give them even access to the machines, and most importantly, they have to have their, the last word over how the machine acts. Mm -hmm. We got a few pictures here from cars that actually interfere when the driver is not putting on the brakes, and we can see the one in the car is trying to pass, but there is a car ahead of him. So the car by itself will say, stop, brake, that's it. Are we handing over too much control to the machine in this case? In this particular case, um, security experts will always argue and also insurance companies that machines are sometimes faster in their way mm -hmm. to react. So it's an advantage. Well, but there are other examples, for example, like you, that you're forced uh, to put on a seat belt, belt and that you get signs of warning that are a nuisance to drivers. Mm -hmm. And the question there is, for example, as well, whether the machine should take over or whether people should have the choice to switch off the system. Mm -hmm. And you think you can make sure in our world that men will always have the last decision to take with the machines? I think that is a key question of our time. How far should automation go? Mm -hmm. And um, it shouldn't be left to alchemy how far control goes. And, and do you have examples where it already, the, the control is too far with the machine? I think um, the seatbelt is one example, mm -hmm. but another example, for example, is debated today in the aircraft. Mm -hmm. Should a pilot be replaced by a fully automated system or not? And just right now we have a debate mm -hmm. uh, around this topic. And I think finally it is a question of how much we trust mm -hmm. human beings to be good decision makers. I trust you that we had a great talk here. Thanks a lot, the Professor Zara Spiekermann.